Okay. Hello, dear friends. Good, good evening. Such a beautiful, beautiful evening. So, um, in one of the video, one friend made a comment about being real, and uh, she has quoted the the words, the sentences from a book, The Velveteen Rabbit. So it was so beautiful, so I want to get it. The Velveteen Rabbit, or How Toys Became Real. Marjorie Williams. There was once a velveteen rabbit, and in the beginning, he was really splendid. He was fat and bunchy, as a rabbit should be. His coat was spotted, brown and white. He had real red whiskers, and his ears were lined with pink satin.、Oh, wow! On Christmas morning, when he sat wedged in the top of the boy's stocking, with a spring of holly, with a sprig of holly between his paws, the effect. Was charming. There were other things in the stocking, nuts, and oranges, and a toy engine, and chocolate almond, and a clockwork mouse. But the rabbit was quite the best of all. For at least two hours, the boy loved him, and then aunts and uncles came to dinner, and there was a great rustling of tissue paper and one unwrapping of parcels, and in the excitement of looking at. All the new presents. The velveteen rabbit was forgotten. <clears throat> For a long time, he lived in the toy cupboard, in the toy cupboard, or on the nursery floor. And no one thought very much about him. He was naturally shy, and、uh, being only made of velveteen, some of the more expensive toys quite snubbed him. The mechanical toys were very superior. And looked down upon everyone else. They were full of modern ideas, and pretended they were real. The model boat, who had lived through two seasons and lost most of his paint, caught the tone from caught the tone from them. And never missed an opportunity of referring to his rigging in mechanical, in, in technical terms. To his rigging, to his rigging in mechanical terms, the rabbit could not claim to be a model of anything, for he did not know. That real rabbits existed, he thought they were all stuffed with 
with sawdust like himself, and he understood that sawdust were quite out of date and should never be mentioned in modern cycles. Even Timothy, the jointed wooden line, who was made by the disabled soldier, and should have had, should have had broader views, put on air and pretended he was connected with government. Between them all, the poor little rabbit. Was made to feel himself very insignificant and commonplace, and the only person who was kind to him at all was the skin horse. The skin horse had lived longer in the nursery than any of the others. He was so old. That his brown coat was bald in patches, and showed the seams underneath, and most of the hairs in his tail had been pulled out to string bead necklaces. To string bead necklaces. Most of his Most of the hair in his tail had been pulled out to string bead necklaces. He was wise, for he had seen a long succession of mechanical toys arrive to boast and swagger, and by and by break their main springs. And、by and by, break their main springs, and pass away, and he knew that they were only toys, and would never turn into anything else. For nursery magic is very strange, and wonderful, and only those playthings that are old, and wise. And experienced like the skin horse, understand all about it. <clears throat> What is real? Asked. The rabbit one day, when they were lying side by side near the nursery fender, before Nana came to tidy the room. Does it mean having things that buzz inside you and stick out hand and a stick out handle? Real, isn't how you are made. Said the skin horse, "It's a thing that happens to you when a child loves you for a long, long time. Not just to play with, but really loves you. Then you become real. Does it hurt?" Asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. For he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. When you are real. You don't mind being hurt when you are real. You don't mind being hurt. 
Does it happen all at once? Like being wound up, he asked, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't often happen to people who break easily or have sharp edges or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off. And your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. But these things does not matter at all because but these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly. Once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. I suppose you are real, said the rabbit, and then he wished he had not said it, for the salt, the skin horse might be sensitive but the skin horse only smiled. The boy's uncle made me real. The boy's uncle made me real, he said. That was a great many years ago. But once you are real, you can't become unreal again. It lasts for always. Once you are real, you can't become unreal again. It lasts for always. The rabbit sighed. He thought it would be a long time before this magic called real happened to him. He longed to become real, to know what it felt like. And yet, the idea of growing shabby and losing eyes and whiskers was rather sad. He wished that he could become it. He wished he could become it without these uncomfortable things happening to him. There was a person called Nana who ruled the nursery. Sometimes she took no notice of the playthings lying about, and sometimes for no reason what, whatever, she went swooping about like a great wind and hustled them away in cupboards, in cupboards. She called this tidying up, and the playthings all hated it, especially the tin ones. 
the rabbit didn't mind it so much, for wherever he was thrown, he became he came down soft. One evening, when the boy was going to bed, he couldn't find the chain dog that always slept with him. Oh, he couldn't find the china, the china dog, the porcelain dog, the china dog that always slept with him. China dog. He couldn't find the china dog. Maybe it's a china dog, or maybe it's a, it's a a a a, a picking puppet. I don't know.、Mm. Nana was in the.、Uh, <clears throat> Nana was in a hurry, and it was too much trouble to hurt the chi to hunt for China dog at bedtime. So she simply looked about her and see that the toy cupboard door stood open. She made a swoop. Here she said, "Take your old bunny. He will do the sleep." With you, and she dragged the rabbit. And she dragged the rabbit out by one ear, and put him into the boy's arm. Oh my! That night, for many nights after, the well-vitin rabbit. Slept in the boy's bed.、Oh. At first, he found it rather uncomfortable, for the boy hugged him very tight, and sometimes he rolled over on him, and sometimes he pushed him so far under the pillow that the rabbit could scarcely. Breathe, and he missed too. Those long moonlight moonlight hours in the nursery, when all the house was silent, and his talk with the skin horse. But very soon, he grew he grew to like it, for the boy used to talk to him. And made nice tunnels for him under the bed clothes that he said were like the burrows the real rabbit lived in, and they would and they had splendid games together in whispers when Nana had gone away to her supper and left. The night light burning on the main on the mantelpiece on the mantelpiece, and when the boy dropped off to sleep, the rabbit would snuggle down close under his little warm chin and dream, with the boy's hand clasped close. Around him, all night long. And so time went on, and the little rabbit was very happy, so happy. That he never noticed how his beautiful velveteen fur was getting shabbier and shabbier, and his tail had come unsewn, and all the pink had rubbed off his nose, where the boy had kissed him. Spring came. And they had long days in the garden, for wherever the boy went, the
the rabbit went too. He had rice in the wheel barrow and picnics on the grass and lovely fairy huts and lovely fairy huts built for him under the raspberry canes behind the flower border. And once, when the boy was called away suddenly to go out to tea, the rabbit was left out on the lawn until long after dusk. And Nana had to come and look for him with the candle because the boy couldn't go to sleep unless he was there. The boy couldn't go to sleep unless the rabbit was there. He was wet through, he was wet through with the drool and quite earthy from diving into the burrow the boy had made for him in the flower bed. And Nana grumbled, grumbled as she rubbed him off with a corner of her apron. Oh, what a dirty little rabbit. It's not in the book, I said. You must have your old bunny. You must have your old bunny, she said. Fancy all the fuss for a toy. You must have your old bunny, she said. Fancy all that fuss for a toy. The boy sat up in bed and stretched out his hand. Give me my bunny, give me my bunny, he said. You mustn't say that. He isn't a toy. He is real. He isn't a toy. He's real. When the little rabbit heard that, he was happy, for he knew that what the skin horse had said was true at last. The nursery magic had happened to him and he was a toy no longer. He was real. The boy himself had said it. That night he was almost too happy to sleep. And so much love stirred in his little sawdust heart that it almost burst. And into his boot button eyes, into his boot button eyes that had long ago lost their polish, there came a look of wisdom and beauty so that even Nana noticed it next morning when she picked him up and said, I declare if that old bunny hasn't got quite a knowing expression. I declare, if that old bunny hasn't got quite a knowing expression. <coughs> he became real. That was a wonderful summer. Near the hall, near the house where they lived, there was a wood, and in the long June evenings, the boy liked to go there after tea to play. He took the velveteen rabbit with him 
and before he wandered off to pick flower or play at、uh, brigand among the trees, he always made the rabbit a little nest somewhere among the bracken, somewhere among the bracken, where he would be quite, where he would be quite cosy, cosy. For he was a kind-hearted little boy, and he liked Bunny to be comfortable. One evening, while the rabbit was lying there alone, watching the ants that ran to and from between his velvet paws in the grass, he saw two strange beings creep out. Creep out of the tall bracken near him. They were rabbits, like himself, but quite furry and brand new. They must have been very well made, for they seem, for their seams didn't show at all, and they changed shape. In a queer way, when they moved, one minute they were long and thin, and the next minute fat and bunchy. Instead of always stay the same, like he did, their feet padded softly on the ground, and they crept quiet, close to him. Twitching their nose, while the rabbit stared hard to see which side of the clockwork stuck out, for he knew that people who jump gently, or who jump generally, have something to wind them up, but he could not see it. Have something to wind them up. Oh, there's a clock. If uh, if uh, a, a mechanic toy jump, there need to be a clock work, right? But he didn't see, for he knew that people who jump generally have something to wind them up. But he could not see it. They were evidently. A new kind of rabbit. Altogether, they are different. They are different. They started. They stared at him, the velvet tin boy, and the little rabbit stared back. And all the time, their noses twitches. Their noses twitches. <laughs> Why don't you get up? And play with us," one of them asked. "I don't feel like to," said the rabbit, for he didn't want to explain that he had no clockwork. Shall we stop here? Maybe another day we will keep on reading. That is quite curious to stop here. I love you. I really do. Do 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 do. Goodbye bye.